Welcome everyone. On behalf of GeekWire Studios, I'm Steph Strickland, your host for today's CTO Roundtable, Digital Transformation in Challenging Times, presented by Intel and Google Cloud. I want to introduce right now our panelists to you. It is an esteemed panel. We have joining us Manoj Sharma, the Group Product Manager, VMware Engine with Google Cloud. Also joining us, Lena Scaramuzzo, Business Development Director, Google Cloud. Rebecca Weekly, Intel Senior Director of Cloud Business Strategy and Platform Enabling. And our partners and customers, we have Luke Peffers, Senior Vice President at Climacell, a weather technology company. We have Jeff Newell, the CTO of Apps Broker, a Google Cloud Premier Partner, providing cloud-based solutions. And Greg Dennis, the CTO of Rivermeadow, a multi-cloud migration platform and services company. I would like to ask each of you what you are seeing in the space, given the incredible challenges that COVID-19 has posed to businesses not yet working in the cloud, or those who are just starting to dip a toe in the water. I was reading a survey of CEOs with the majority of them saying they are seeing their cloud usage, as you might imagine, go through the roof. And that is something that we're here to talk about today in sort of a disruptive sense. Manoj, I want to start with you. What are you seeing in the space? Yeah, thanks, Steph. Um, what what we are noticing, you know, we there was already like a groundswell of a movement towards the cloud, right? Uh, uh, even before this crisis, the health crisis we are facing. But what uh, customers and companies are realizing now is that, you know, they need to have uh, a level of agility to handle unforeseen situations. You know, when with the work from home initiatives requiring a lot more infrastructure and a lot more capacity to deal with you know, the remote desktops that customers, uh, that employees need. Uh, they need a level of uh, elasticity, you know, that the, that the cloud provides. And so what they're seeing is that, you know, this, this entire change is actually leading them to adopt the cloud that much faster, you know, uh, and, and, you know, undertake initiatives to do cloud transformations uh, at a much more accelerated pace than they were doing so before. I think we're seeing a, a situation where uh, companies that were perhaps hesitant to get into the space are now clamoring to do so. I wanna bring Lena into the conversation. Can you build on that please from a partnership perspective? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our, our partners that we're working with are, are, are faced with the challenge to help these customers move faster. Uh, and so definitely, you know, they're out there trying to find ways for customers to, to accelerate that move to the cloud in, you know, in the past, you know, months or years was acceptable. Now they need to do it in days and weeks. And so making that shift is, is a, a big challenge for partners as well, you know, and then they need to be able to help customers move with, with ease um, and with the ability to leverage existing skills because nobody has time overnight to go out and completely rebuild skill sets inside, inside their business. So that's something else that we see, you know, partner, the partner environment is really us, you know, clamoring to make sure that they're able to address that. Um, and then from, you know, total cost, cost of ownership and whatnot, they need to be able to help customers move and they've got to have a, an economic business case to support it. So um, it's, it's really um, something that our partners are working hard to, uh, to help the customer solve. I think from an economic standpoint, really, it, it in some cases boils down to you don't do any business or you get on the cloud and you do business. And I think that is, uh, given what's going on with COVID-19, certainly driving a lot of this change. Jeff, I want to bring you into the discussion. Uh, your company is built on being a disruptor in the space. I want to know what you are seeing as a partner who helps these businesses make the leap. Um, yeah, so, you know, we, as a partner, we work on a, a wide variety of different um, verticals and use cases. Um, so some of the really cool things we've done this year um, have been to work with some of Google's largest customers in the media sector, um, and that's doing things like massive rendering jobs. You know, the, the availability of compute on Google Cloud is, is, is pretty impressive. Um, and typically, we see the highest performance of those, um, those rendering workloads using um, Intel high-performance CPUs. Um, and we help those customers by doing it in a cost-effective way, um, you know, because using compute can be expensive, so you need to manage that very carefully. So as a partner, we have tooling and approaches to help with that. Um, but, you know, in this time of COVID, one of the most useful things we're doing right now is helping health and life sciences companies, and that's doing valuable genetic research. Um, so we're, we're an ANFOS um, launch partner for, for EMEA. Um, and we're, we're helping our um, those customers, you know, use that this new multi-cloud Kubernetes platform from Google, 
um, so that they can leverage their existing on-premise infrastructure and flex into Google Cloud. That's just a couple of ways we're helping. And we'll definitely talk more about Anthos uh, here in just a little bit. And as someone who spent 20 years in the, the TV news business, um, I appreciate anything that uh, makes life easier and faster uh, when you talk about rendering. But obviously the health and sciences is a real impact benefiting people's lives ultimately. So we definitely appreciate that. Greg, um, what are you seeing in the space? Thanks, Steph. So uh, similar to some of the comments that were made, uh, we help customers migrate to cloud. Uh, we work with customers across different verticals. We're seeing different sort of shifts and, and paradigms within those verticals. Um, one of the things that customers have sort of uh, found difficult is to be able to move into some of the native cloud formats, the ability to refactor applications and, and to view the world as very complex. Uh, this has led them to really slow down their adoption. So one of the things that we've seen uh, with this VMware on Google Cloud or GCVE is that customers can accelerate their cloud adoption by being able to leverage people process and technology that they're already comfortable with, already familiar with, to be able to fast track those migrations onto cloud to be able to get realize those benefits quicker. It's, it's actually um, a stroke of genius to make something that is to some degree really reinventing the space, yet giving people the comfort of something that they already understand. I wanna talk to Luke uh, from Climacell. Climacell is built for the cloud. And as I was learning more about the company and given your long run in this space, do you see the challenges of, of COVID-19 and the innovation that it can drive as being the sort of uh, developments that your company is keenly interested in as you start to think big picture beyond the incredible work your company's already doing? Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, it's a it's a really incredible time with with uh, COVID and you know everybody having to work from home. But as you mentioned, you know, Climacell was born on the cloud. We 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 overcame a lot of the obstacles that that a lot of other companies face right from you know day day one. We were born on the cloud. We developed on the cloud, and a lot of the technologies that we're talking about today um, definitely influence and and impact us as well. You know, we're we're not in the in, in the process of migrating from bare metal systems to the cloud. We're on the cloud. But at the same time, we're trying to recruit expertise, technologies, people who have expertise that can come and help us innovate on the science side and on the engineering side. Some of those people come from backgrounds like myself, um, working on, on bare metal. So even though we're not migrating climate cell systems to the cloud, we're migrating our experiences, you know, my experiences to the, to the cloud. So these same technologies that, we're, that, that, that you all are developing that are helping companies migrate it's also helping companies like us evolve on the cloud because we, we, we have to evolve. We have to keep up with the latest and greatest um, tech technologies that are that are coming out of you know, hardware, software, and we have to migrate within the cloud. And so I, I, I think that the work that's being done, you know, with, with Intel, with Google, internally here at Climacell, um, definitely support cloud native companies like ourselves. I think it's interesting you having a, a the, the bare metal sort of background and speed is everything with what Climacell does. So we'll we'll hopefully address for folks who um, are interested in learning more about that and some of the more technical questions here in just a little bit. Uh, Manoj, I want to talk to you about the importance of making Google Cloud VMware Engine generally available with the full rollout completing later this year. Why is the timing of this so critically important? Yes, Steph. Uh, what customers are say, saying to us, uh, and we've talked to you know hundreds, um, you know, almost uh, uh, since uh, for the for the last few years, what they're saying to us is like the cloud is great. You know, we want the elasticity, we want the flexibilities and efficiencies, but don't make us change when we want to when when you're making us get to the cloud. We want to keep our skills we, uh, that we've built over the past few years. We want to build the. We want to keep our processes in IT that we've kept over the uh, that we've built over the past few years, years and hardened over time. We want to bring them as is. So, what can you do to make the journey to the cloud, you know, simple, fast, uh, and efficient, right? And what we realized was that when we make customers change the application architecture, it's great in many situations. You know, when you change from a three tier traditional application to uh, a cloud native, um, you know, Kubernetes driven, microservices driven architecture, that's fantastic. But not everybody has the luxury of making this architecture change. And so what we, what we are saying is, you know what, we'll give you something that is compatible with what you're doing, right? If you're using VMware on-premises, we'll give you VMware in the cloud. Uh, it'll give you the continuity, 
it will give you the 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 ability to you know adopt it on day one right click a button migrate the vms uh, on the ui and off you go um and and what that gives you is it it gives you the cloud uh faster at lower risk and uh, frankly cheaper than any other way to get to the cloud right uh, if you're especially if you're coming from a traditional context like vmware and so uh, with that in mind, you know, what we also want to keep um, uh, in mind is our customer needs to uh, actually adopt VMware uh, from wherever in, in the cloud, but uh, from wherever they are, like they might be in Europe. We have a lot of European companies that uh, love Google Cloud. Uh, Asia Pack is uh, developing as a, as a region. So uh, it's very critical for us to meet the customers where they are, not only from a technology and platform standpoint, but also from a geography standpoint. And so we have a very aggressive rollout schedule. In fact, our rollout schedule is the most aggressive of any cloud provider when it comes to the VMware space. In six months, we are establishing presence in 10 regions worldwide. No stress, no stress. <laughs> you're, you're well positioned to hit a home run with this. And since you're talking about meeting customers where they are, I wanna to talk to Rebecca right now. Um, Rebecca, what are the top technology challenges uh, to supporting cloud service providers and how Intel specifically is helping Google Cloud? Well, I would start with the first part, of course. Um, when we think about the top challenges that our hyperscale service providers are facing, it's availability, reliability, serviceability, right? It's being able to give a consistent experience to customers, their customers, regardless of when, where, how they're coming to the public cloud. And I think all of us, I mean, having done this for a bit of time now, uh, the last three months has been an amazing learning experience because all of us are looking at COVID-19 as this in insane experience, but it's really triggering business continuity planning, disaster recovery planning, a systematic approach to thinking about the future of business differently. And that is an opportunity. So as people are looking at this scenario of why we come to the public cloud, where we come to the public cloud, we're looking at it in the context of not just the next four, six, 12, God knows how long, many months <laughs> that we're gonna deal with this, but actually the future, right? The future of our businesses. And how do we have a geospatial, reliable methodology by which we can de-risk our business and our productivity. And that is a totally different way of approaching businesses. So one thing that I've really observed in the last year and a half, it's been a growing trend, is this change of who's coming to the public cloud, right? It's no longer the born in the cloud, SaaS, digital services providers. It really is traditional enterprises, businesses that are looking to transform where they're going and what they want to accomplish. And those companies, again, reliability, serviceability, availability, at any time where they need it, as they need it. Security, compliance to the different regulatory systems. These are different recipes than what you might need for you know, a co-location facility to do better edge peering when you're you know, a content provider. So it is a very different mindset that people are bringing. And I think we're looking at this from our side, both in the hardware reliability features that we offer. We're doing, you know, many people know about reliability features such as our advanced RAS packages and things like that, but also telemetry, sideband, out of band telemetry, helping people understand and monitor more effectively. You know, the register sets that are within our CPUs actually can help people understand what the load is at various points. And of course, many of our service providers in Google most definitely have features that allow you to understand when you're hitting those points that might affect your latency, those points that might affect your utilization, that will allow you to ensure you have a more consistent SLA. So consistency and reliability is something that I don't believe everybody thought about before. It was just cost, cost, cost. And this time is security, reliability, of course cost. Cost never goes away. But trying to look at it more holistically to drive your end businesses, your productivity in a time of major change. It's interesting too, because as companies adopt um, working from the cloud and the various ways that they can make their business transition, as you talk about these large companies, uh, it becomes their path to business moving forward. So while something like COVID-19 might be driving the change, 
what we're really looking at is transformative business in the long run. And Lena, this is a perfect opportunity for me to talk to you about uh, something that Rebecca mentioned as she is seeing these large legacy companies begin to make this shift. What are your large company partners looking for and how can Google Cloud meet those challenges? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And so, so we are, we're really, you know, focused on our partnership and, and really expanding our partnerships um, with Google Cloud VMware engine. And, uh, and so we're really seeing the opportunity to uh, evolve and embrace um, even more of those enterprise partners. And that's really been part of our strategy from day one uh, with the solution. Um, and that is to to make sure that we actually embrace that rich ecosystem of VMware partners. Um, when you think about their their partner ecosystem, you know they're all built around those tenants that that Rebecca just so eloquently talked about. You know when you talk about um, reliability and availability, and you, you know you need to have a a very robust DR and backup solution. So we have focused on our partners, um, building partnerships and expanding partnerships with uh, companies like Zerto that help to bring great RTO and RPO for, for customers. Um, you know, Zerto, Veeam, Actifio, so many of those technology partners. Um, if you think about on the storage side, uh, I think somebody earlier in the conversation talked about uh, being able to leverage those those partners that that customers have used traditionally on prem for years. So if you think about for storage, NetApp and Dell, you know we have uh, we've we've built solutions and uh, with those partners around around Google Cloud. Um, you know it, it goes on and on uh, between security and networking, um, and then you think about all the MSP and SI partners that are out there, um, migration partners like River Meadow here. And of course, Intel, uh, you know, building upon some fantastic technology through the, these uh, these partnerships and 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 all the partners on the phone. So, so really, really excited about the opportunity that we have, and and you know, as we scale, um, you know, the the business and see more and more enterprise customers, those large enterprise customers stuff that you're talking about come to cloud. Jeff, I want to expand on something. Talk to me a little bit more about the stuff that the work that you're doing in the health sciences and, and give give folks an understanding of, of what that looks like. When, when a customer comes to you and says, I've got a, a massive issue that I need to be able to address, process, uh, simplify, put plug into the cloud. Where do you start from your consultancy standpoint as you drive people to making this migration? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we, we've been a Google Cloud Premier Partner for about nine years now. I think we're one of the first in the UK. Um, so you know, we've watched um, Google go from you know a, a, a small cloud provider to a massive one today. Um, you know, being able to compete with all the major cloud providers. Um, the way we help our customers is by following a very agile approach. You know, we want to focus on a business problem that we can solve with a Google technology, and we want to immediately show value within that organisation. Um, so, you know, we're kind of doing a lot of work on Anthos at the moment. That's, that's tackling the migration thing from a more application modernization perspective. Um, and, you know, for Anthos, it's a new platform from Google that can help organizations um, very quickly adopt cloud native ways of working within their development teams. And that means they can start to deploy containerized workloads with lower operational overhead. So we, we want to help our customers move to um, weekly releases or daily releases. Whereas in a typical enterprise, they're probably doing releases once or twice a year. And slow releases don't help traditional organizations retain customers. Um, so regular releases drive customer retention and increase loyalty. So if we can help them to do that, that's a, that's a great thing. And, and one of the ways we're helping those customers is by doing a four week Anthos pilot. We think four weeks is a good amount of time to you know, prove out the technology and move their first workload. Um, and th their workload could be hosted on, you know, on-premise, which is one of the great enabling things about Anthos. You know, we can deploy it onto VMware clusters that might exist in an existing data center, or we can choose Google Cloud or AWS, and soon we'll be able to deploy onto Azure. So truly multi-cloud and hybrid. And, you know, go going back to, you know, what Rebecca was saying, you know, customers get to see the ease of operation and the single control plane for observability and site reliability that Anthos provides. And, you know, it's it's quite amazing to see IT departments, they completely get the value of having a, a platform like that. Thank you. Thank you. For Rebecca, 
Rebecca, at its core, Intel brings horsepower to the table, the, the physical processing power that um, helps make so much of this happen. Uh, what are some of the big uh, deep dive technical accomplishments or things that you want people in the space to understand about what Intel brings to the table? Well, I would first say we bring processors absolutely, but I think what we're most excited about, in, at least in my division, uh, is that it's not just about the processors, right? We also bring NICs, we also bring SSDs, we also bring persistent memory. There's so much that we're building. We're also bringing XPUs to the market. And I think for me personally, the intersection of all those silicon photonics, right? The intersection of optical and new classes of technology like persistent memory and processors and more traditional you know, mechanisms like SSDs, being at the intersection of all of those components, helping drive the ecosystem from a, a systems design perspective, working with OXMs of every variety to help improve you know, solutions as we go to optical switching to the node, as we think through immersion cooling solutions in the long term. Um, it's just so exciting to be at the intersection of those components and not just think about it from the processing perspective, as much as we love our processors. Uh, so when I get to work with an end user like Google Cloud and end user like actually our MSPs and RSIs and think with them about the journey of a business going through transformation, the number of tools and solutions that are in play to actually have that conversation is so much more exciting than just talking about a processor. And that's what I love. Uh, so, you know, usually when I start with a customer, we're talking about how they look at their workloads and how they understand what the bottleneck is. It may be compute capacity. It may be memory bandwidth. It may be the overall memory capacity and, you know, there are definitely databases in the world that want 12 terabytes of access, <laughs> but in general, those are a small set of problems. So finding the 90, 20 or 90, 10, 95, 5, 80, 20 rules for their specific environment, looking at that histogram, using tools like VTune, using tools to understand the overall network issues, the latency, the end experience they're trying to create, and then being able to work through that layer of the data center as a system to actually help find the different bottlenecks and work through network and storage and compute all together uh, is the best part of what I do every day and is the best part of working with hyperscalers like Google because they're so smart, they're so clever, and they bring such a combination of their systems design background and their core expertise of driving their own systems as well as this layer of being a new cloud service provider and a dominant one in this new space. Yes, but more about the processor, so I'm totally <laughs> I'm going to talk about the processor all day, don't get me wrong. <laughs> and I love you know, what we get to do in terms of engineering and co-engineering with them, right? It's not just about selling a processor, but it is actually about helping with the benchmarking, the engineering, and the tuning. We have a very deep partnership with that alliance, and I'm really grateful for it. It was interesting to me that you sort of described the process of providing solutions for customers in terms of a journey. And Greg, I want you to come into the conversation uh, with River Meadow. I imagine when clients come to you, uh, you are yourself sort of looking at what the sum total problem is and the individual solutions that you can apply. Your company has this wealth of explanatory content on your website that will help demystify cloud migration and adoption for both the CTOs as well as CEOs and other people driving that change. What is one thing that you want people, uh, Greg, to understand in the space, especially with an eye toward Google Cloud VMware Engine? Yeah, it's a great question, Steph. Um, you know, I think that uh, for us, a lot of this is about trying to simplify some things that, again, that appear to be complex on the surface. Um, we have the ability through expertise. Uh, we're a services-led organization, so it's sort of services by the tip of the spear. Um, deep expertise in all things migration. So that helps to build out the landing zone. It helps with establishing governance, because again, companies can trip over governance. I mean, it helps to put together an actual migration plan. That takes you through discovery and understanding things like application dependencies, as well as take a look at capacity planning to make sure the number of nodes that are, are, are put into the quota for GCB are appropriate. So we can take the customer through the entire journey of migration from beginning all the way to end. And I think that it's important that we're there with them throughout the entire journey. Luke, I want to talk to you a little bit as, you know, obviously a real world example of the, sh the sheer power of cloud native uh, computing. I want to know about your considerations for scalability, cost and performance and the art 
of balancing all three. I, I think to some degree, your company can really take advantage of the alliance between uh, Google Cloud and Intel, but I, I'd like to have you discuss that a little bit um, more in depth, please. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, when, when we're considering, you know, a cloud provider or, you know, the, the types of technologies that are going to help us expand and grow and be successful as a company, it really comes down to flexibility. You know, at Climacell, um, you, you, you mentioned earlier, we're a, a weather technology company. We're not a UI company. We're not just a weather company. We're not a data company. We're trying to do it all. We are doing it all on the cloud and it requires a cloud infrastructure and a set of uh, core capabilities and technologies that allow us to do end to end. So data ingest, storing, manipulating, developing petabytes worth of data, doing uh, fast parallel operations on those using things like, you know, Dask powered software like X-Ray, Pangeo, Scikit-Learn, a lot of really geeky stuff that, that, that enables us to, to, to innovate on the scientific and engineering side. We don't want our, our engineers and architects to, to worry about the underlying HPC. We want to give them a set of tools that are flexible enough that they can build what they need to innovate on the on the science and 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 uh, tech side. You know, we we were able to 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 paralyze parallelize our workflows, make them run very very efficient on very small VMs. We don't need a massive VM for some of our smaller jobs that run every few minutes. What we need is local um, compute and storage. We need we need access to our to our data. We need to manipulate the data on a minute by minute um, cadence and make that available to the customer. We also have other uh, other um, you know areas of focus within the company where we're developing these large you know deep climatological archives of data where we can do you know data processing we can learn from the data we can present that data to the customer so we we need the ability to to store and manipulate quickly large large volumes of data on the compute side we also have these very um, hardcore weather models like our our um, CBAM models uh, climate cells bespoke atmospheric model it's it's more heavy on on the compute side. And this is where our, our, our traditional expertise on bare metal, you know, if you look back into the 1950s and beyond, you know, the, 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 the beginning of hard, you know, bare metal HPC systems were developed in part to be able to run these large weather models and you know, these large global weather models that are solving equations of motion across the entire globe up to the, you know, um, near space. It's a, it's a massive computational undertaking and to be able to migrate those to the cloud and run them efficiently and cost effectively and reliably um, was scary five or ten years ago. You know, I, I was I was born on bare metal systems, and I ran these things on bare metal systems. And to think that we can migrate those to the cloud and actually run them efficiently was, you know, a, a dream. But now here we are in reality, and we're doing it. We're doing all of that on the cloud. You know, from high, high you know, high uh, rapid refresh update every minute, petabytes of storage, massive computations, and we make it. You know, we, we, we end to end, we're bringing in data, we're bringing in the weather of things data, we're running weather models, manipulating data, and providing forecasts to the customer in in, in a form of, of, of insights. So we, we even take it a step further. We're not just giving our customers weather data, we're giving them business insights. And we do all of that on the cloud. Um, we do it in a scalable way. And we're able to do that because of the technologies that that Google, you know, is able to offer us. We, we need to balance the you know the freedom to build and innovate systems because we have a lot of expertise. We have people that are that are born on bare metal. We have people that are born on 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 the cloud. We are able to build our own um, you know computing technologies that we need. We, what we don't want to be handed as a black box. You know, here's a VM that's generally optimized for you know big workflows. Well, we, we're developing our own custom workflows. We know what kind of computing we need. So we need control. Um, we, we we need freedom to, to 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 develop, but we also need control. We don't want our our folks working focusing all of their effort on building the, the high performance systems. We want to give them the tools so they can innovate on the science and technology side and get um, you know, superior forecasts out to our customer every few minutes. And you, you also mentioned the, the, the Intel, the Google Intel Alliance. You know, we are able to, 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 to leverage that, especially when it comes down to the heavy computing you know, with, with, our, with our really hardcore weather models. There's a lot of room for optimization. We're, we're compiling these things with Intel compilers. We're running them on Intel hardware. There's a lot of room for for um, you know per performance gain, and for me because I, I have a budget to maintain, performance equals cost to me. If we're running things more efficiently, yeah, we can get it out to the customer faster. But what it really comes down to is we need to be cost effective, so we can scale and so we can offer our customers something that's cost effective for them for 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 their their um, business. And you know, I mentioned cost. That's what it comes down to. We need to be cost effective, but we also need to be infinitely scalable. Sounds easy enough, but as we all know in this room, infinite scalability is not possible um, without without a heavy price tag. So we have to balance that. We have to build systems that are able to scale, but we need to be cost effective. 
And that's something that we're constantly battling with. We don't want to work ourselves into a corner, just buy a massive VM, hoping that we don't scale beyond its capacity. We need to think ahead of it. And we need to leverage things like Kubernetes and auto scaling and let the, the software and architecture that you all are building on the Google and Intel side help us with that, you know, help us solve that problem. Scalability, cost effective. Given some of your large aviation customers, um, it's obvious that you have their vote of confidence, and that is an industry where weather and the ability to parse out that data is absolutely everything. And I find it interesting that you talk about um, cost as not just the bottom line that you see on the spreadsheet, that when it comes to performance and accessibility and speed, that ultimately um, your, your way of thinking about cost maybe is a little bit uh, different. I want to talk to Greg from River Meadow. Um, how does your company reduce the risk and the cost in cloud adoption? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so one of the things that we obviously evangelize is to make sure that um, you've got the appropriate strategies in place to be able to try to do that cost mitigation. Uh, it starts in the discovery process, right? So one of the things that we advocate is cloud right sizing to make sure that you understand the workloads that you're going to migrate to cloud before you migrate to cloud to ensure that you actually understand what that cost um, penalty is going to be or what the operating expenditure is going to be. So a lot of companies have been doing CapEx and depreciation for 20 plus years, uh, but they're very new to cloud economics. And so it's important that they understand uh, what it means to them from a monthly perspective. Um, past discovery, it gets into utilization. Um, so having an effective tagging strategy is one way to mitigate costs whereby workloads can be powered off or powered down in periods of non-use. Non and so there's things that can be done that can radically uh, reduce costs, even with um, you know, a high performing workload environment uh, where things aren't being used every minute of every day. So those are some of the things that we put in place. I'm glad I asked. That makes a lot of sense. I want to address a question to Lena and then to Manoj to expand on in a technical uh, sense. Lena, let me start with you. So uh, Google Cloud VMware Engine opens the door for Google Cloud, in, in my perspective, to some degree, for those businesses running those VMware workloads. And you talked about that. And it's really an issue of accelerating um, either or both the migration and adoption. So how important is this partnership with VMware Engine and what Google Cloud is trying to accomplish in the space from a business sense? Yeah, no, very good question. And and our partnership with VMware is very, very important to us. We're super excited about our partnership um, and, and really the expansion of our partnership as it continues to to grow. Um, you know, with the, the solution, what, what the partnership enables is, is it, it enables us to give our customers more flexibility. And I think Manoj talked about it a little bit earlier today. And, and, and the bottom line is we need to be able to provide choice to our customers. There are customers who might want to go fully cloud native right out the gate and, and, and that's where they are in their journey. There are other cu part customers who have the need to, again, like we talked about earlier, kind of leverage their existing skills and whatnot and take that, take that to the cloud. Um, so what we're able to do is we're through the partnership with VMware and through Google Cloud VMware Engine, we're able to give customers that, that choice, if you will. Um, it, and in that choice, if they're able to easily and seamlessly migrate their workloads to Google Cloud, you know, they're able to, at the same time, eliminate the need to actually manage that infrastructure themselves. So it gives them instant business value, and it really can simplify and speed that cloud journey. So now let's get into the weeds with Manoj on this. Um, expanding on this in a technical sense, and to, to circle back on something Lena said, and you did touch on this, this ease of uh, adoption and use from a UI standpoint. Um, it was, I, I'm working off memory, four, four clicks to launching a fully functional instance um, of Google Cloud VMware Engine. Did I, did I get that right, Manoj, but from the Google Cloud console, but tell me what that means in a practical sense on the back end. Yeah, uh, Steph, um, you know, with this service, I think uh, uh, you know, the service actually represents the second phase of maturity of, uh, of the, the cloud. You know, in the past, it was always about shared, ten uh, shared tenancy and multi-tenancy, uh, you know, with, with infrastructure that's shared by multiple customers. And, you know, while that's great from an efficiencies and economies of scale standpoint, what that impacts also is your performance, right? The, the predictability of your performance 
and also the ability to run more traditional infrastructure that requires really, you know, uh, anything that you can throw at it, like databases, you know, transactional databases that run large banks, you know, uh, aviation companies, manufacturing companies, uh, you know, they, they need the horsepower to make sure the business critical workloads can be supported. So uh, with, the, with this offering, Google Cloud VMware Engine, we were, uh, we were able to get customers dedicated, isolated, private, single tenant infrastructure that is able to run the platform that they are that they know and love, you know, the VMware platform on infrastructure that is that they know and love, you know, the Intel uh, processors and the I Intel um, uh, storage devices. Um, that and it's it's all dedicated to them, giving them that much more uh, flexibility, right? And that that much more predictability with for their mission critical and business critical workloads. At the same time, customers just don't want yet another on-prem data center to be recreated externally. They want the efficiencies of scale. They want the economies, uh, 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 efficiency, uh, economical efficiencies that the cloud is so good at. You know, we have uh, automated deploy, automated scale out, automated scale in. You know, as you mentioned, four clicks to get to a cloud um, within thirty minutes. You know, uh, which is the fastest uh, uh, time from you know the idea occurring in your mind to actually running a VMware environment, right? And so uh, you know this changes the game, right? And not it doesn't end there. You know, customers just don't want to bring VMware and then you know while they consume it in a very efficient and very uh, high performance manner, um, the they they want the it, the, they want the innovations that the cloud providers are building, right? They are they are building uh, new services, uh, you know, Kubernetes, for example, but also data services like BigQuery, AI, and ML transformations that are possible with new services that Google is building. And uh, let's talk about modernization. So while this is a dedicated, isolated infrastructure, you can also run Kubernetes on it. Uh, by using Anthos that works with VMware. And so essentially you're now able to run a modern application next to the data gravity of your existing uh, traditional application deployments. And, uh, and, and then, you know, essentially get the, the best of both worlds really, right? So that's what this is about. This is bringing the best of both worlds, the, the on-prem infrastructure, the, 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 the software infrastructure of VMware, the hardware, that uh, customers like with Intel, uh, with the efficiencies and economies and the innovations that Google Cloud is so good at. That's a fantastic answer. And it actually gives me an opportunity to bring Jeff into the conversation. Jeff, I, I know that you addressed it, but I'd like to talk a little bit more from your perspective as, at how Anthos really changes this narrative for application modernization, please. Yeah. Um... So, you know, Anthos has been around for about 12 months now, but it's, it's kind of becoming prime time in the last probably about three months. The big focus this year is all about Anthos. Um, the roadmap for Google is one of the most impressive, impressive I've seen. You know, the, the engineering teams that are working on it must be quite substantial at Google. Um, the way I look at it is Google are making all of their knowledge about containers, which began back in 2003 when they created Borg and all the experience that they've learned from deploying some of the largest online applications. They're, they're kind of making all this available through the Anthos platform. Um, so it will essentially be providing organizations with a cloud-like interface where they can deploy their workloads in a kind of consistent way. Um, and that's gonna take a lot of toil and operational overhead away from teams. So we think that's really important. Um, and it's gonna give you full observability. It's gonna follow SRE principles. And it's going to help you adopt cloud native ways of working. You know, it's a CIO's dream, you know, and Anthos can make it happen. Um, we can help those organizations by, to adopt all of those different elements, and then we can help them get those workloads into production. So, yeah, I think application modernization is going to be a, a big push for 2020. That actually is an opportunity for me to ask everyone as we talk about um, what is exciting in the next year in the space. So I think um, you, you've you covered it. I will uh, bring, let me bring Manoj back into the conversation. Uh, what is what is most exciting to you right now as we look ahead a year, maybe two years or five years down the road, Manoj? 
Yeah, I think the uh, with with the with now uh, enterprises just um, being able to you know have no barriers to the cloud. Um, you know, with with native support for what they already do on prem. You know. Uh, uh, application platforms such as VMware being supported natively in the cloud. You know, the, the, the last barriers, you know, there's, there's similar efforts that actually Google has even uh, for applications such as SAP and Oracle. So the last barriers, the last bastion, so to speak, of, you know, the server hugging that was going on on premises um, are, are now broken down. And so now what we will see is you know the true the the true transformation to uh, what's possible now with with the with the data that enterprises have on premises, the processes they have on premises, and uh, the marriage of that with uh, with the with the modern services, the modern application architectures, uh, you know the intelligent data processing pipelines that are possible in the cloud, and and the agility. That that brings to the table for customers, and so what we'll see is new types of application architectures. I already touched upon one of them, which is that now you'll be able to run, for example, in a private manner, in a dedicated, isolated, high-performance manner, modern uh, applications in Kubernetes um, on on bare metal infrastructure in the cloud, uh, and that gets to th that gets you the the agility and flexibility at a low cost that Luke talked about. Right, uh, but we'll also see that there'll be new types of data paradigms, things you know, with data sources on premises that were uh, untouchable uh, to sort of the, the cloud uh, uh, with with the with the agility of the cloud and you know the serverless architectures of the cloud. They will now be able to operate on these on this data gravity that can now live and shift uh, shift and live in the cloud in the future. And so that means a new era of um, intelligent uh, businesses will open up. We talk about digital tr transformation. It will now become you know, an intelligent transformation for, for enterprises with, with AI and ML uh, services uh, that are uh, you know, uh, truly unforeseen in any other context but the cloud. That's a fantastic headline, by the way. I'm, I'm making a mental note. I, I like that. Uh, you mentioned Luke. Luke, I want to bring you in the conversation. Uh, as you look ahead, what is something that, um, from your business's perspective, is something that you're excited about or something that you're looking ahead to uh, for the next year or, or two or even five in the space? Yeah, I think you know we're excited about scalability. We want to scale as a company. We want our customers to scale. Uh, and we need cost-effective solutions to scale. We also need to prevent any technical or HPC debt you know, as we as we try to build this out, but you know, so some of the things we're excited about are you know we're 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 working as I mentioned with our with our you know kind of hardcore weather model. We're really interested in having access to the latest um, you know com compute optimized instances like the like the C two instance that, that that we've been working with, and just making those types of things available to us in a way that you know it, it's it's really amazing that we're able to run in a in, in a in a virtual cluster. Right, we're we're spanning across 10, 20, 30 compute nodes, hundreds to thousands of CPU cores, and we're seeing performance that's close to bare metal systems, and that's incredible. <laughs> I mean, what, what what we're looking forward to is more of that. You know, bringing us these virtualized compute environments that, to, for me, magically work similar to bare metal. I mean, we're 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 testing out some some kind of beta um, tech tech that's that's coming from Google. Um, that's we're, we're, we're able to 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 spin up these virtual clusters in groups that are co-located so they can communicate to each other fast enough so we can actually take advantage of the computing power of these compute optimized instances you know, with, with our large workloads it's not just about the the cpu performance or the node performance it's about cross you know multi-node performance these things have to talk to each other fast enough to leverage the actual compute power and we've seen great great performance and we're just looking forward to more of that so we can spread that throughout the company, not just for these high compute workloads, but for our scalable workloads, our, our rapid refresh workloads, our data storage, just you know, help make that technology available to us. And that's really what we're looking forward to. You had me at beta testing, and I know you can't tell me more, so I'll just move on. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk right now to Lena. Lena, what are you uh, looking forward to seeing in the next year, several years, five years down the road? 
I'm really excited about what this means for our partner ecosystem. I mean, when I think about the opportunity that exists out there to help solve customers' real problems that they have today, and to actually do that while delivering a TCO benefit, um, I just, I'm super excited about what that means for our partner ecosystem. And there's so many different perspectives where partners play a very, very, uh, you know, necessary and important role in this transformation for these businesses. You know, we talked earlier about it, you know, between the technology partners that are helping to, to build new technology solutions to make this all better and to make, you know, to solve new customer problems. And, you know, as we think about the problems coming out of our current economic and business and, and health environment, you know, there's, there's so much that's going to evolve and change, I believe. And so I'm excited to see what our partners uh, and ecosystem do with that. Greg, I want to get your perspective on this. What is something that you are keenly interested in in the next year to five years? Yeah, so I've got a few things. Um, I think the first thing is really you know, the emergence of this technology globally. Um, one of the things that we're seeing is that uh, emerging markets are getting more involved in the cloud space. So places that have typically uh, fallen behind um, you know, are coming online now. So African countries, South American countries, as well as coming out of the, the East. So having a level set sort of technological playing field for everybody is exciting to see. Um, the other one I'd say is um, the ability to help different customers who are different aspects of their own evolution. So this transformation is a different journey for every single customer. Um, we are obviously help with the IaaS or infrastructure as a service space predominantly, uh, but that's also shifting into platform as a service. Uh, so being able to get more in tune with helping customers to leverage platform as a service to use databases in the cloud. Um, and I think the third thing I would say is sort of emerging technologies. And so while we're helping customers move a lot of their server-based workloads, again, to cloud, we think the, the next evolution is going to be on the desktop side. So the ability to actually have your, your, your end, uh, end device or your end compute device be able to host it in cloud, similar to sort of like a hydro service where you just turn something on and you've got immediate access, immediate availability. Uh, and so there's a lot of really cool things that are coming up on the horizon that we're looking forward to helping customers to, to, to get to. You could not have teed me up uh, more appropriately for Rebecca. So thank you for that, Rebecca. I know Intel um, really cares about making technology available um, on a wide scale. And um, certainly to Greg's point about um, creating transformative business across the planet. Uh, but I also know that that uh, for you, you have some very interesting perspective on what's coming down the road and the things that professionally get you excited. Talk to me about what you see in the next year to five years. Well, in the next year to five years, uh, it's a long, long time in the world of hardware. <laughs> I know. Although everything seems to take a long time in the world of hardware as well. Um, I mean, I think I mentioned some of it earlier, right? We are at such an interesting space where, and, and Luke mentioned it, I think, incredibly um, eloquently. We are looking at how data is managed in a system, and that system is global and available and on in a very different way than it has been. And Lena mentioned, I think, also in how that will transform businesses. You know, it's something like 79, Forrester says something like 79% of businesses want to understand the data they collect, but fewer than 29% of businesses are actually acting on the data that they receive, right? We store a lot. But what are we doing to change the game for our businesses? And there is a divide there. And I love how Greg brought it together with other regions of the world, because this is where I think transformative thoughts, diversity and inclusion within our world is going to be opened up by cloud computing. Me personally, I mean, I am super excited about optics. I think the number of picajoules per bit that we can get is very exciting. And I know people have been talking about how copper's gonna die, copper's gonna die, uh, it is, it has to. Uh, so when we get to a place of optical switching, when we think through at every level, right, for memory, as we think through it um, in the intersection of IO, where we're just pushing bits and what we are computing with is completely different based on the applications you want to run and the composability of it is dynamic and real time. And how that comes together with robotics and automation and how we manage those systems effectively, uh, we are just scratching the surface. I mean, we are just at the true transition for what the world's supercomputers are going to be. And it is totally different than the era of the 1960s supercomputers, which by the way, everything cool was ever invented in the 60s, but what is going to happen moving forward is um, 
it is the kind of thing that the material science, the, you know, just the world's compute capacity is just getting started. And it's getting started through partnerships like this. And I'm so excited to be a part of it. This has been an incredible panel. Speaking of just scratching the surface, I could continue this conversation, but we are so appreciative of everyone's time. Thank you for your insights. We really do appreciate it. On behalf of GeekWire Studios, I'm Steph Strickland, your host for today's CTO Roundtable, Digital Transformation in Challenging Times, presented by Intel and Google Cloud.